I died in my hardcore Minecraft world. No, not like that. It's kind of a long story. But before we get into that, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 69 billion subscribers by the end of the minute, and with your help, we can do it. But without further ado, here's how I died in hardcore Minecraft, and why I think it might be a good thing. I'm finally back in my world, day 101. It's been weeks. I had been on a three week long vacation in the mountains before, and hadn't played since. Okay, back to what you guys actually care about, Minecraft. I basically just looked around my world all day at everything I had built in the last episode. I also noticed that a ton of villagers had somehow managed to escape my village. Not sure how, I have a fence around the entire thing. Get back in there! Shh, you saw nothing. I also found this random glass pane on the ground. It does make for a pretty cool parkour thing, I guess. Next, I sat in my throne that fluxes how rich I am. I was also told in the comments that you plant the pitcher pot I had gotten from the sniffer in a farm, so I made myself a diamond hoe and tried it out. First try. To my surprise, it actually worked. I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like when it's fully grown. Then I went and visited my dog and my parrot. I'm gonna name you guys soon. Spoiler, I never ended up naming them. I started off day 102 with testing if I could bone meal the pitcher plant thing. To my surprise, I actually could. I broke it and planted it by my house as decoration. Then I made some more fireworks and went out in search of the new pink cherry biome. I'll tell you why I haven't already found one in this world in a minute. While exploring, I stopped several times to murder animals so I could eat them. I also found a Badlands biome, which I'm pretty sure is even more rare than the Cherry biome. I found a village, and then I stole all the hay bales, and I saw an outpost. That'll be useful later if I want to do more raids. Just kidding, it won't be useful, because I died. Get out, this is my bed now. As soon as I left the village, I instantly saw another village. So, I permanently borrowed all of their hay bales without permission, but they didn't have very much. After a while of exploring, I came across a single pink tree, bruh. But around the corner, I saw that there was a whole cherry forest, which I ransacked. Also, the reason why I didn't loot a cherry biome in the first 100 days was because I just forgot to. Remember the two hardcore worlds that I died in trying to survive 100 days? I had found a cherry biome in both of those worlds, so I guess in the third world, which is this world. I just didn't even think about it because I thought I already had. I hope that makes sense. Once I had everything I wanted, I headed back home, but stopped at yet another village to steal all their hay bales. I'm glad I made that diamond hoe, or else it would take a while to collect all of them. I arrived back home during the night. I wanted to defeat the ender dragon again now that I had my elytra, because I would never done it like that before and it seems fun. I headed back to the nether because I would need gas tears to respawn the dragon. And is it just me or do ghasts only spawn when you don't want them to because it took me all day to get all the tears I needed. I also got hot tourist destinations. While killing a ghast I was right by a treasure bastion which I was tempted to loot but I think I'm gonna save that for later. After getting lost for a while I finally made my way back home. I headed to the end where I used my four end crystals and rebooted the ender dragon. Can we just get an F in the comments for all those poor innocent endermen who lost their lives? Just kidding I'm glad they died. The animation for the dragon respawning was very cool though. I took out the crystals with ease because I was able to fly, and it was a lot of fun. I did a lot of damage to the dragon by hitting it with arrows and attacking it with my sword when it perched, and once it was low enough, I flew up to it and killed it with the sword. Of course my game had to lag right there, perfect timing. You know me, I had to hit it with the easy. After collecting the XP, which there's like none of, I saw a new gateway had opened up, so I went inside hoping to find end cities. After exploring for a while, I came across a few, but didn't get much loot. I did get a few diamonds, which I will always take. I eventually found the biggest end city I have ever seen. I'm convinced that this giant end city is two end cities combined. Just look at this, there's no way a single one would generate like that. I got a lot of loot from this end city and instantly found another one, but first I grabbed the dragon head before I forgot. I looted the second end city, which was also massive, and remembered to grab the dragon head. I almost instantly found yet another one right after that, which also had a ship. Wow, my luck is insane right now. It was also a really neat shape, it was like someone copy and pasted the same thing three times. I somehow managed to find another one super close to that one that also had a ship. My luck is crazy. After grabbing the dragon head at that ship, I realized I forgot to do the same at the previous one, so I went and did that. I don't know how, but after grabbing the dragon head and flying back, I found yet another end city, with a ship. This is getting insane. There I got a bunch of loot and an end smithing template which I hadn't gotten yet. 
After getting the dragon head, I realized I was pretty much out of rockets, so using my last rocket, I went through the end gateway and went back home. I wanted to start maxing out my armor so that when I loot a bastion, I'll be ready. I found an old Respiration 3 book I had in the chest, so I applied it to my helmet, and now I have a maxed out helmet other than thorns because I don't want it. It is a very annoying enchantment. I want to start trading with librarians to get good enchantments, but I didn't have any books, so I completely destroyed the library of the stronghold so that all there was on the bottom floor was just cobwebs. I still needed a few enchantments to max out my shoes, so I went and rerolled a bunch of villagers to try and get them. After a long time, I got good deals for Protection 4, Efficiency 4, and Sharpness 4. Then I moved those three librarians into one spot underground so that they shouldn't die. Alright, it's day 110, I'm going to loot a bastion, right now. Going over to it, I was so scared, I was honestly thinking I was screwed and I thought about leaving. But honestly, I had a great start. I decided to go in through the side and mine in. I saw a huge pit of piglin brutes which I took care of with my bow. I looted a few chests, but there weren't any netherite upgrade pieces. Eventually, I got to the main part of the bastion, and I saw it was the type of bastion with bridges. I, you know, borrowed, wink wink, all the gold that was just sitting out there, and then headed off to the bastion I had found while hunting ghasts, since there was a 100% chance I would find a netherite upgrade there. The treasure bastion is the most dangerous bastion, but the most rewarding. I decided to play it safe and build a staircase down outside the bastion. I dug in and built a super ultra safe bridge to the middle. Nah, just kidding. Because I'm stupid, I parkoured my way over to the magma spawner hoping to break it, but a brute fell on me and knocked me into the lava. Luckily, I had golden apples, so I ate one and was fine. I knocked the brute off the platform and made my way over to the middle. Once I was safe, I opened a chest and got the netherite upgrade and a netherite ingot. Also, a good amount of diamonds. I was actually so happy. But then I saw it. Another chest, which also had an upgrade in it. I mined all the gold and went to the other side of the bastion, where there was surprisingly no brutes. Inside the chests was nothing good, and inside I mined all the gold. I also used a trick where I saw all the gold from the back. Then I headed back home before my luck ran out. I had to tear down my throne of riches because I needed the diamonds and the netherite. Then after duplicating all of the netherite upgrades, I got myself full netherite armor. Let's go! This had been a goal of mine for a while now, and finally getting it out of the way felt so good. I also upgraded all of my diamond tools to netherite as well. Can someone in the comments tell me how so many villagers escaped? I have absolutely no idea. I also cured the villager that sells unbreaking to me, and while it was curing, I absolutely scammed a bunch of villagers by giving them a stick. Makes sense, doesn't it? Once the zombie was cured, it gave me unbreaking for one emerald and a book. I bought three books to put on my chestplate, leggings, and boots, which didn't have it before. Game audio didn't record for the next two days, sorry. After getting full netherite, I was super low on XP. I needed more to apply soul speed 3 to my shoes, and then I would have maxed out armor. So I headed into the end to get more levels from the enderman farm, but not before falling in lava. Twice. After a while of farming there, I got back up to level 50, which I think is good enough. So after trolling some endermen, I headed back to the overworld, and I went to put soul speed on my boots, but it was too expensive. Bruh. Now I need to take off all the enchantments already on it and re-enchant it with the exact same enchants it already has. Minecraft is so dumb sometimes. The thing is, my feather falling villager died, and I don't have a depth strider villager. So during the night, after re-rolling for a while, I got two sleep deprived villagers to sell me feather falling 3 and depth strider. I used a grindstone on my boots, which was super painful, but after buying an Unbreaking 3 book, I was able to get maxed out boots. Well, other than thorns, but I hate thorns. It's the most annoying enchantment ever. Then I started collecting some materials for a future project. What project, you ask? None of your business. While caving, I found a few diamonds, but with my Fortune 3, I only turned 5 diamond ore into 7 diamonds. My luck was terrible. After getting lost, I made my way out of the caves and began work on my next project, the Villager Trading Hall. I already had one, but it was just not enough for me. I wanted to add another layer above it to make it even more efficient. It took me a very long time because I could not figure out how to do it for the life of me, just like the first 100 days. It may have taken a few days, but I finally finished the Trading Hall. Well, almost. I still have to get all of the dang villagers in their spots, which is super annoying. 
what I'm going to do is build a staircase to the second floor, put rails on it, and make a roller coaster for the villagers and get them up that way. I got one villager up and I need 14 total. At first the villagers would not go into the minecarts for some reason. They just kept pushing it away. But eventually they started going in a lot more and honestly it was pretty fun just to see them pile up into the room that they would stay in forever. I managed to get all 14 villagers in the room that I needed. I started running out of villagers near the end. I put all the villagers into their spots. The first few kind of voluntarily went in, but I had to boat the rest in. The other villagers kept getting in the way and it was just so annoying, but eventually I got all of the villagers into their spots. During the night I made some staircases up to the spots where the zombies would go, got some name tags and named them something super duper funny, and got the zombies. Can zombie villagers infect villagers? Well, there's only one way to find out. Just kidding, I never ended up infecting these villagers. I headed to the nether to collect materials for my next big project, a gold farm. The farm that would eventually lead to my demise. I was going to need a ton of magma blocks. Surprisingly, I had a pretty hard time finding a lot of magma. And I was also on fire so much which didn't help the collection process. In total, I think I'm going to need around two shulker boxes full of magma. I got one today. Still mining magma day 121? Yay, so exciting, great content. The highlight of the day was finding an ancient debris while mining magma blocks, which I've never seen before. By the end of the day, I had all of the magma that I needed, so I headed back to the overworld. Yeah, I might have gotten a little carried away and gotten way more magma than I actually needed, but I guess it's good to have just in case. Then I broke the beacon, which actually took so long, and set the beacon back up by my strip mine. Next, I farmed a lot of cobblestone, which I will need for the farm. While mining cobblestone, I found a cave with a mob spawner. In a chest had the other side music disc, which I have heard is pretty rare, but I'm not sure. Someone in the comments tell me if it is or not. Don't mind me, just casually on one heart. Am I making you nervous, huh? Too bad. Once I had all the cobblestone I needed, I broke the beacon again, which again took what felt like forever, and replaced it back to its original spot. By then, it was the end of the day. I found out what it's like to be inside a tree today. It's pretty uncomfortable. Today, I was mostly just collecting the last few materials I needed for my gold farm. Alright, I had all the materials, time to build a gold farm. I had to build it above the nether roof, so I started pillaring up, and look at this amazing ladder clutch. Insane, I know. I'm just the best. Once I got up to bedrock, I had to find a bedrock that was in just the right place. Once I found one, I pearled up to the nether ceiling. Look at that. Then, I started making a weird bedrock breaking glitch contraption thingy. What I have to do is place TNT, go into here, and spam right click as fast as I can, and... It didn't work. Bruh. It's fine though, I brought a second TNT, so I have one more chance. And it didn't work. It's okay though, I brought backup. I brought everything needed for another portal. And of course, I spawned in a cave. So, I dug my way up, collected sand for more TNT, and killed creepers all night because I needed gunpowder. Day 125 and I made 3 more TNT. That should definitely be enough. I headed back to the nether and pearled onto the ceiling again. I set the contraption back up and... Bruh! Wow, I suck at this game so bad. I went back to the overworld through the nether again and got 4 more TNT before coming back and setting it back up for the third time. If this doesn't work, I don't know what will. After doing three more and failing each time, I decided to get an auto clicker. There was no way I was going back to get more TNT. And finally, after using like 10 TNT, I broke bedrock. I made a trail to another waste biome and started on the build that would later end this world. I had to place so much magma. Oh my goodness, guests kept spawning and being super annoying. So I took care of them all. Anyway, back to the time lapse. There was just so many gas that kept spawning. It is so boring placing so many magma blocks, it takes forever. Today I somehow ran out of magma blocks, so I had to go down and get some more. Yay, so fun. I got about half a shulker box, which should hopefully be enough. Hopefully. I headed back to the overworld with one rocket to spare. I needed more rockets, but it was still daytime, so I headed into the caves hoping to find creepers. I found a new cave system I hadn't explored yet which was filled with diamonds. 
I was super unlucky with creepers. I almost had the same amount of diamonds as I did gunpowder. I dug back up to the surface and saw that it was nighttime, so I hunted down creepers all night until the next morning. And guess what I saw? A cherry biome super close to my base. How did I not see that before? It literally took me like two whole days to find one. I wish I had known about that sooner. I headed back to the nether roof. It was nice not having to pearl through the bedrock this time. I finally finished the platforms that the pigmen will spawn on, and now I just have to gas prove it. Magma is so annoying by the way. Once I finished gas proofing it, I started on the spot where I will stand and collect the XP. I had most of the spot where AFK set up, but now I need to make the killing chamber by putting 25 minecarts onto one block. I did that and broke the block underneath to where the pigs will go. Once that was finished, the farm was officially complete. So I hit a pigman with my bow and tested it out. It worked great. The piglins spawn on the magma platforms, pathfind over to me and fall in this chamber that has 25 minecarts inside. Then they all die to entity cramming. Like the last 100 days, I wanted to get back up to level 100, so I spent the rest of the day AFK. After almost the entire day AFK, I made it back up to level 100. This farm is way faster than the Enderman farm. I tried to go look in the chests, but all the mad pigmen were on the spot where I had to be on to check, so I flew away and flew back so that they would despawn. I also saw that there were so many swords just piling up on the minecarts because I guess I was out of storage. Once I checked the chests, I saw that I had so much gold, rotten flesh, and swords. I threw all of the swords onto the ground of the nether roof ground of the roof? Anyway, I threw them down because I don't need them. I crafted all the gold into gold blocks and got over half a stack. Nice! I also kept all the rotten flesh because I can trade that with villagers. I just chopped down trees all day 132. Not sure why, but honestly, why not? You can never have too much wood. Look at that villager trading hall. It's so ugly. Well, first of all, you can hardly even see it. Let's change that. Okay, now that that house is torn down, you can see how ugly it is. So, I spent the next day sprucing. <laughs> get it? Sprucing? Because I'm using spruce? I'm sure no one in existence has ever made that joke before. Anyway, I made it look a little better, I think. I'm not adding a roof because I plan to add even more layers in the future. On day 134, I realized I kept collecting sand over and over again. So, I headed to the desert I got the camel from and started mining sand. I mined all day and even the night because it was just so satisfying. Look at this. Hey, I also got some gunpowder too, which was nice. I smelted some of the sand I got into glass the next day. I also dyed some of my shulker boxes that have sand in them yellow. I just pointed that out because I've never done that before, and I thought it was pretty cool. I made my way over to the trading hall and added some windows. Hmm, interesting shape. Then I added some interior decorations to the trading hall. I just want to make it clear that I did not do this for the villagers. I purely did it for myself and for my own personal gain because I want it to look good when I come in there. I would never do anything nice for the stupid villagers. I improved the interior for the second floor of the trading hall today and gave the villagers jobs. That's about it. I think it looked pretty good once it was all complete. I realized my shovel and axe had kind of low durability, so I went to the gold farm to repair them. This jump always scares me. I may have gotten a little carried away and AFK'd until the end of day 138 and gotten to level 150. I flew far away from the gold farm and then came right back so that all the pigmen will stop being mad at me and I collected all the gold and rotten flesh. The storage system was overflowing with gold swords clogging it. I needed a storage system. I put all the rotten flesh in shulker boxes because they couldn't all fit in my inventory. After burning all the swords on the ground, which was pretty satisfying, not gonna lie. I headed back home. I added all the gold blocks to my collection and headed over to the trading hall to trade rotten flesh to villagers. Why on earth would they even want to buy rotten flesh in the first place? Stupid villagers. I got a lot of emeralds and decided, you know what, I want to get rid of this mountain. I probably won't finish it in this 100 days, but maybe in 300 days. Oh wait, 300 days will never exist because I didn't even make it to 200 days. But I started on the massive project. Kept working on the project, but I moved the beacon up so that I could use haste to instamine stone. It made the process a whole lot more enjoyable. I was recording a time lapse, but it, uh, it didn't save because I ran out of storage. After another full day of mining, my shovel was almost broken. Somehow, my pickaxe was nowhere near broken, though. Also, can we just appreciate how clean that entry was? It was just so clean. It's so fun to watch Enderman die. After mending my shovel and everything back up, I headed back and continued grinding the mountain. 
Hey, I got a music disc. That's pretty cool, I guess. I don't know, I'm running out of things to say. I found a lava pool inside the mountain. That's kind of cool, I guess. At this point, I had mined so much cobblestone that my stone chest was completely full. So I had to change the roof a tiny bit to stairs, but you can't even tell the difference on the outside. And then added another stone chest above it. My pickaxe and shovel were running low on durability again. So I headed back to the enderman farm and after trolling an enderman, I headed back home. Alright, this is the last day I will be mining the mountain for the rest of the 100 days. I promise. Maybe. I lied. I just wanted to finish mining out this layer and I would call it a day. After finally finishing mining that layer, I was collecting all the cobblestone on the ground when I saw some raid boys. I decided to kill them and do a raid, but this time without a bow. In the first 100 days, I did a raid and basically only used my bow, and that was way too easy. Now I want to see how tough it is without one. I made sure to fly around my village so that the raid didn't start there and went to the savannah village. I was kind of nervous because I didn't know what to expect. The first wave was honestly pretty easy and so was the second one, but once the third one started, I immediately saw a ravager. They can do a ton of damage if you're not careful. So I took out all the raiders one by one until the only one left was the ravager. I wanted to say something like, OMG I almost died but I clutched up, but it didn't hit me a single time. Maybe being in water is the strat. In the next wave, I definitely didn't even come close to using a totem, I don't know what you're talking about. I took out that wave with ease, not coming anywhere near death, and that was the first wave that had the Vex summoning guy. The next wave, however, had two Ravagers and a Vex summoning nerd riding one of them, and I got in a mild disagreement with one of them and almost died, so I outplayed it and just flew away. Easy. After getting in yet another disagreement, I had to outplay them in the exact same way again and flew away right before the crocodiles could get me. They never saw it coming. I decided, you know what, I should probably stop almost dying, so I took out some of the easier, weaker raiders easily, and then went back to the big boys. I killed the first one easily, but after killing the second one, I was really weak, but I didn't even care. I took out the annoying Vex Master, and these baby angel demons are actually so annoying. It's difficult to take them out because they are so tiny and stupid. After dealing with them, there were two raiders remaining, but I could not find them for the life of me. I looked down a giant cave, which I found a diamond in some how. how did I find a diamond before the last two raiders? After mining the diamond, guess how many diamonds I got with my fortune 3? That's right, one. My fortune luck this video is absolutely trash, just like me. At this point, it only said one raider was left for some reason. So I made my way out of the cave and had the genius idea to use a bell, and it ended up showing me an outline of the final raider. It was underground for some reason, but I killed it and won the raid. Easy. After dumping all my items from the raid into my chests, I went out searching for a trident. There is a new feature that you can do in 1.20, but it involves a trident. If you put channeling on a trident and hit a creeper with it during a thunderstorm, it will turn into a charged creeper. If the charged creeper blows up a mob, it will drop its head, and if you put the head on a note block, it will make the noise of the mob. I killed 4 trident guys today and didn't get a single trident. At night, I farmed creepers for more gunpowder because I was running out of fireworks. After a while of finding no trident boys, I finally found one and it dropped its trident. You know what, that didn't take too long, let's go get another one. My luck was amazing today because it only took a few nerds with tridents to actually drop one. That's the second one. By the way, I got a few sea lanterns because I could use them as decoration. On my way back home, I stumbled across a mushroom biome. I was running kinda low on food, so I killed all the cows there. I let two survive though to repopulate it. Psych! What are the odds that a creeper spawned on that one block sticking out of the water? Anyway, my luck for the day apparently hadn't ended because I looted a shipwreck and got two smithing templates in every single chest I searched. That's gotta be pretty rare. Also, I looted a buried treasure. The loot was meh. Then I stopped at a village to go to sleep. After stealing all the hay bales, I headed back home, but on the way, I found two more smithing templates. When I got back home, I enchanted one of my tridents, and after a few tries, I got channeling. Now, all I need to do is wait for a thunderstorm. Look at this pathetic silk touch pickaxe. Only efficiency 4? Nah, I can't be having that. I made sure to max it out and turned it to netherite after duplicating a netherite upgrade template thingy and using a netherite ingot I had gotten at the bastion. I always want to have at least one netherite template to spare because I never want to go back to a bastion ever again. Okay, that's not true. I probably will end up going to many bastions in the future. Oh wait, nope, because I died. After that, I named all of my tools other tools because apparently, I like to confuse myself. I noticed it was raining, so I wanted to see if it was a thunderstorm by striking a cow with a trident. 
it wasn't. Then, I wanted to make my compound more flat. It was weird at the moment, so I got a lot of the dirt I had gathered from mining the mountain and got to work. I filled in the entire thing too. I didn't just leave a hollow like some poor person. I finished the part I wanted to transform and then noticed a giant cave right by my base which I completely covered. I didn't bother filling it in because that would take too long. Look at this super ugly fence wall. I didn't like it so I started changing all the fences out to be stone brick walls. I think that this will look a lot better as well as kind of stick to the theme I was going for. I ran out of walls though, so with my silk touch pickaxe, I started mining the next layer of the mountain. When I started mining the mountain, I mined a ton of it with my fortune pickaxe, so I only got cobblestone, but you need regular stone to make stone bricks. Get down! After placing walls all day, I finally finished. I think it looks a lot better. I went into a cave to get some copper and killed a chicken for feathers to make a brush, and then realized I already had one in a chest. Well, that chicken lost its life for nothing. The reason I wanted a brush is because this chunky boy here looks lonely, so I wanted to get him a friend. I went out in search of warm ocean ruins, which are all like 7,000 blocks away from my house. There's an ocean right by my house that has like every single ocean biome except the one I need. After searching many ruins today, I had no luck. I found this really cool looking village that was half in a badlands biome while trying to find ocean ruins. Never seen that before. Of course, I took all their hay bales. I still didn't have any luck today other than that. I found a pillager outpost the next day, which had a goat horn in it. Fun. I also finally managed to get the sniffer egg today and flew home into the sunset. I placed the sniffer egg inside the sniffer prison area. I know the egg cracks faster when it's on moss, but I'm not even gonna bother with that. The sniffer tried to escape the prison, I think, which I was not allowing. I saw that all my tools and armor were on kinda low durability, so I wanted to take a trip to the gold farm, but decided while I was there, I should build a storage system. So I gathered all the redstone things I needed and headed to the farm. I got pretty far into the build before realizing I needed redstone torches and I forgot to bring any, so I headed back to my house to make some more. I finally got the auto sorting system working day 159, don't ask me how it works, I got no clue. Then I built the contraption that ejects gold swords because let's be honest, I'm not gonna waste my time smelting them into gold nuggets. I wanted to eject them into lava but I didn't have a bucket so back to the overworld I went. I made a bucket and on the way to the gold farm I collected lava. I placed it in where the gold swords would get burnt, attacked a pigmen, but they all piled up in the wrong place. I had made a few adjustments so that they couldn't get onto the sorting system, or so I thought. But I did fix it, and so I went AFK for what would be the last time. Day 161, the final day in this world. I was still AFK, trying to get my weight back up to level 150. I completely left the room, and when I got back, this is what I saw. Here's the clip. A pigman had somehow managed to climb its way into my AFK chamber. Let's talk about this for a second. First off, I don't even know how this is possible. I made sure to completely cover the entire platform where I had the sorting system, and yet a pigman still made its way on it. Then it climbed the ladder up to me and killed me. Second, remember how I said I didn't bother to put thorns on my armor because I said it was the most annoying enchantment? Well, if I had put thorns on my armor, the pigman would have died before it killed me. Maybe thorns isn't the most annoying enchantment, because it could very well save your hardcore world. It wasn't the gold farm itself that killed me. It's a great farm, and the link to it will be in the description in case you would like to build it yourself. It was what I added to the farm that killed me, the storage system. And it was also partly me being dumb, because I had a ladder to my AFK spot just sitting right there, super easy to access. But I didn't think they would be able to get down there in the first place. Honestly, I think it might have been a good thing that I died. I wasn't even super attached to this world. I liked my world, don't get me wrong, but there was something about it that made it seem like it just wasn't for me. I hadn't even played very long in this world, but strangely enough, I was already running out of ideas on what to do next. But dying in hardcore, it happens to the best of us. There's no hardcore world that is going to last forever. And I'm honestly not even that upset about losing the world I had put 50 hours in. I will make new worlds, rebuild all the progress I lost, and I will rebuild it even better. I will make a world that is fit just for me, nobody else. I have so many plans for this channel that I know you guys won't want to miss. But these plans require a lot of time and effort, so I'm going to need you guys to be patient. 
I have been having a lot of fun making these videos, but I hardly have any experience with this sort of thing, and I'm learning as I go. Remember, this is just the start of our journey. And that was my attempt on a heartwarming speech. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.